Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mugli Tambani from Top Trader South Africa, and we're back with another installment of Market Masters. And you guys already know I sit down with the most talented and prominent traders in the industry. And a big shout out to XM for sponsoring this episode as well. Today's guest, uh, he's been in the game for actually quite a minute, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah like been. four years. Four years, yeah. yeah four or five years. Four or yeah. five years, yeah, like I'm from like 2018. Yeah, 2018. Yeah, yeah, I've got the Pedalanium guy there with me <laughs> from Kairos Forex Wealth Creation. Is that mm-hmm. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. How are you doing? I'm good, man. I'm yeah, good. Man. Yeah, that's Th- good. Thank you for having me. Eh? No, thank you. Mind yeah. you, uh, even though like you ha- you you actually stay in uh, Durban, right? Durban. Yeah, yeah. And, like we're shooting in like. In, in Joburg right now, so I, I was just like, "Hey, when you come this side, me I'm for the good up in your plans somewhere there, yo." Yeah. But I appreciate the time that you've made for us to mm. come and talk, uh, come and uh, talk about your story as well. Like mm. before forex, obviously people want to know what's here. This guy, <laughs> we see you, Mr. Blue Screen over there. Want to know before he was Mr. Blue Screen? Mm. You know what is actually happening in your life? Like before forex, were you doing school? Mm. What happened? Yeah, give us a <laughs> give us a background there. <laughs> well. Um, Before I started trading, yeah. I was into ministry. Oh yeah, and I was studying. I was studying. I was studying mechanical, mm-hmm. mechanical engineering, and at the same time, I was in Bible college. Oh yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how are you balancing the, those two? Um, well, I wasn't that good with school, though. Okay. Especially with the mechanical side. Oh. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, but the mechanical side of things. Um, I then dropped out. Mm. Um, I, I had a few friends who were trading. Mm. Well, they were not profitable. Also, my brother, my 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 eldest brother, was trading, and I decided to also like try out a demo without having any knowledge. One of my friends told me. You should sell when it goes down. You should buy, <laughs> <laughs> you should buy when it, it goes, goes up. up. Yeah. So I only did that. I had like one lot. I was trading with one lot, a thousand, a thousand, uh, what's it? A thousand dollars, a thousand. The demo account. A demo yeah, account, yeah. yeah. yeah okay. I was trading the demo account at a hundred thousand yeah. dollars, yeah. I was selling with one lot, buying with one lot, <laughs> selling with one lot. <laughs> yeah, and, and no analysis was going no, on. No, I didn't know anything. Yeah, I didn't okay. know anything. I asked my brother to teach me. He said, no, he can't, because he wasn't profitable. Oh, I see. He wasn't profitable. He started being profitable after I started trading. Okay. So I then continued with Bible college. While, while I was in Bible college, I then started trading. Uh, I was looking for a way to make money. Mm. I started trading, uh, I attended classes, um, I felt like I didn't get the right information from the first guy. Then I, I started to like um, create relationships with people who trade around Durban um, through social media and stuff. Then I went to work, to a, uh, I went to work at a call center. Mm-hmm. I went to a call center for a month, they paid me like a thousand, a th- a thousand one, thousand two. Really, there. a whole month. The day I got my salary, yeah, <laughs> I never came back to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just woke up in the morning. And I said, Ah, I'm not going back there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going back there. Then I called my parents and I asked for money to attend another class. Um, so my dad is a mechanic now. Mm. So I then went back home. I got a few steel to go and sell. L- like I got a few things to go and sell mm. and I got some money for my class and my mother gave me like three K on, on top of that money. Then I went to to Sanele Latino. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah Sanele yeah. Latino, yeah. yeah. I went um I went through his course, I met a few people in the group. I told him at this at this one time, I'm gonna drive your artist three one day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he challenged me and said, I will see. Oh yeah. <laughs> I said it on the group yeah. and he responded. 
I was so excited at that point. I had very, very great passion for trading. Mm. Um, at, at points, I'd, I'd be emotionally, I'd be down because of the losses I used to make. It, it, like, it, it's everyone's beginning stage. Mm. You know? um, I'd make losses and stuff, make losses. And sometimes I'd, I'd make profit, maybe like $20 profit, yeah. $50 profit and withdraw. And you know, I'd get excited for those $50 and stuff. Then I started an account with $80. I remember this day. Um, I was in Bible college. I was focusing on Bible college okay. at that time. And as I was trading, I left the call center. Ne? Mm -hmm. As I was trading, I grew my account. And while I was walking back home, I went to church. Mm. And from church, my pastor called me. He, didn't, he needed assistance with something. Then I had to walk to my pastor. They mugged me and they took my phone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and my trades were on. Oh, yeah. I was trading Euro USD on that day. Yeah. Were you, yeah. Were you buying or selling? I think I, I think I was buying. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think I was buying. Yeah. Um, after that, okay, after they mugged me, I went to the police station and stuff, you know, the whole process of being mugged. Mm. Then I went back home over the weekend. I used my mother's phone to check my trades mm. while my trades were still on profit. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. that's how I bought my first laptop. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> that's because, nice. because I used to go to the internet cafe oh. every now and then. The, the internet cafe was, was, was like um, five, five rand per hour okay. at that time. Yeah. I used to go to the internet cafe and watch my, my, my trading view from there mm. and stuff. Then I, I had one computer I used to sit on every day <laughs> and because it had, it. it had my logins oh, on yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. every day in South Beach in Durban. Okay. I was staying with my brother there. And like as time went on, man, um, my brother would testify on this. The day I received my first 150,000 withdrawal, I never slept. Mm. I never slept. Mm. This was after like a year after I started okay. trading. Yeah, but like before we actually get into after a year and a half. Uh, after a year and a half, yeah. okay. But before we actually get to that, like mm. uh, your learning process there, what 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 is it that you feel like you were doing that was mm. contributing towards your learning? Um, I think because I used to trade alone. Eh? Mm -hmm. Actually, I do trade alone. Mm. It's there and there where I contact my friends and where I need assistance or something. But one thing that um, impacted my, my trading is associating myself with the right people okay. that, that are profitable in trading. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes, yes, everyone makes losses. Mm -hmm. But those guys had like good setups, you know. It, it wasn't about the money at that stage. Okay. I was focusing on um, getting good setups, setups, knowing how to draw, knowing how to um, place my resistant levels and stuff. Because at first I used to draw every, everywhere where the market turns, I just draw. I just draw. I just draw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I just draw. And I didn't, I, I didn't understand. Like, um, there's this guy that told me that draw everywhere. Everywhere you just, you just have to draw. And I, yeah. I noticed that I... This is not the way. Then I got friends ne, that, that were able to, to trade and stuff. And I went on to Instagram and stuff. And I checked up, I looked up some setups on YouTube. I, I looked up some setups on Instagram, Facebook. Mm. And that improved me a lot. Okay. Ne? Then I started practicing every single Sunday. I was at Market Bean and Sun Coast. Okay. <laughs> I ordered, uh, what's this? A hot chocolate, a bottomless hot chocolate oh, yeah. to analyze. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I used to sit there, I analyze, I analyze, maybe from like five till seven or till eight. Mm. Yeah, yeah, till eight. From five till eight, I analyze, I jot down everything. Okay. And I, I even write down, let's say I'm expecting an upwards movement maybe on um, GBP USD, um, I'm expecting a bearish movement on. Uh, maybe Euro USD, whatever it is, mm. or even gold. Then I'd, I'd make setups of like five pairs, and I'd choose three that I'll be looking at throughout the week. Then I'd choose one, 
that I'm really going to trade. Yeah. <laughs> so that I get like assurance of. And then at the end of the week, I'd check all my trades to boost my confidence. Mm. Né? And I'd use small lot sizes at first to gain confidence. Because okay. a lot of people try and use big lot sizes whilst they still have to start with gaining confidence with mm. small lot sizes mm. and grow into big lot sizes. Yeah. So I then, I then realized that the reason why I kept on checking my phone it's because I was over risking at one point. Okay. So then I decided, let me just go back, use small time, like use small lot, si lot sizes, I mean, small lot sizes, then grow my account and I gained more confidence step mm. by step. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how it happened, man. Yeah. It's, it's nothing big. It's not like I had maybe a, a miracle encounter. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Nah, but, the, but, but you know what I'm actually appreciating about your journey is that like you said now when you got mugged mm -hmm. and then on you, uh, and they took your phone mm -hmm. and then you mm -hmm. got a home and then you were I, able to I log got in. My, first, my first HP laptop. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think that's what a lot of people tend to miss with the small profits that they make mm -hmm. is that you, know, you need to reinvest in yourself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so many people tend to miss that. Now they want to trade 10 lots there, but <laughs> only on the phone. Yeah. They don't have a laptop, mm -hmm. they don't have the right equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so obviously looking at you today, that was a very smart move from you. Yeah, you? yeah, because it, it like it helped me. Getting a laptop helped me, I won't yeah. lie. Yeah. Because it helped me when it comes to my analysis and stuff. Because it's not guys, it's honestly it's not good to analyze with the phone. Okay. Because you still have to identify your candles, still have to identify your patterns. They have to identify the, the, the market structure, the, the, whether it's an upwards movement, it's a downwards movement, whatever it is. Mm. Yeah, so it's, it's very advisable to, to have a laptop and mm. like analyze with, with your laptop. Yeah. yeah, but it's the hang and drive for me that the internet cafes where you <laughs> find me. That's important though. Cause yeah. like, and, and a lot of people need to understand it's easy come, easy go, you know. Yeah, so the mm. mm. thing is with, with people, I feel like now it's about money more than knowing how to trade. Okay. It's about um, when am I buy, buying my first goal seven? Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe when I, I'm, I want to buy my first goal seven at 21. Yeah. I want to buy my first um, G class at 23 years. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the problem. People focus, start, people are starting to focus on money more than getting the actual skill of trading, more than understanding the, the patterns of the markets, more than understanding the, the overall movements of the markets. Yeah. So we end up losing that because, well, it's true, social media. <laughs> yeah, by, but those things motivated me. Seeing guys like um, some guys in Richards Bay, I won't mention names. Okay. Yeah. Uh, guys in Richards Bay, um, guys in Durban, mm. driving nice cars and stuff. It motivated me. I told myself, ah, I have to wake up every morning and go to the internet cafe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because these, these guys were driving M4s. Mm. Uh, one day I passed an, another guy. Um, maybe you know him, Ashley. Uh, yeah, Ashley Durban. Has to be. Yeah, uh, Ashley oh, has to be. Oh, has to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we're from the same township. Okay. So I passed um, Ashley driving an M4 and I said, ah, one day that will be me. Yeah. <laughs> one day that will be me. Then I started focusing even more, okay. even more, even yeah. more. Yeah, but you see, right there, how do you take, because like, okay, social media, you go into social media, you get there, you see all these things. Sometimes does it, was there never a point where you felt like it was too much for you to take in or... Like, how did you take in that inspiration and turn it into something <laughs> useful? <laughs> to be very honest with you, there was a night where I felt like I was failing in trading. Okay. I even cried. Mm. I cried. Um, I prayed. I played music. <laughs> 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 like, then I went back to Instagram again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I was asking God, why can't I do this? <laughs> yeah. Like, why can't I do this? Why can't why 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 this can't be me? Mm. Yeah. And I started going back to the drawing board. Okay. I went back to the drawing board. I tried again. Mm. I tried again. 
Where, well, when, when it comes to the crying moments, my crying moments pulled me closer to what I wished for. Okay. My crying moments weren't just crying and saying, ah, no, I'm done with this thing. Mm. Yeah. I had a lot of failures in trading and when I started and I decided I'm going to fail going forward. Mm. Because that was the point. I'm going to fail going forward up until I get where I want to get. Everything happens step by step. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I can't wake up the next day and expect to be driving a G-Class or something. Mm, yeah. So true. Yeah. yeah, you have to start somewhere. I, I wanted an RS3. I, I settled for an A3. <laughs> 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 That's my first car. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's part of the game. We, 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 shouldn't, we shouldn't soft life um, ourselves to death. Mm. Nah. We, 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 we should take things step by step. I, I, I saw one status being posted by Stylish Kids. That's, that's, that's what he was saying. Mm. We shouldn't soft life ourselves to death. Mm. Nah. So I grew into trading step by step, seeing these guys drive these fancy cars and stuff. That motivated me a lot, even though I'd go back to YouTube and cry myself back to sleep <laughs> and, and Instagram. But it really motivated me the following day and I thought, yeah, yeah, man, it's possible. Because I remember this other, this other day, I only had like um, onions in the fridge. I had one onion and a bottle of water. Okay. I had to fund my account or buy groceries. <laughs> So the money was there, <laughs> <laughs> but the decision was <laughs> Yeah. So then I decided to fund my account, and I blew my account. <laughs> I blew my account. Yeah. Ah, and I said, I, I'm, I'm leaving this thing. <laughs> I'm leaving this thing. I called my brother, my, my, my older brother. Yeah. Um, I asked him for like 300 rand so I can find, a, I can find my account again. He gave me 700. Wait, so wait, I need to understand your thought <laughs> process right now. You need to buy food. You need to fund an account. You blow that money. You call your brother. You ask for money to fund an to account. To fund my account. <laughs> Not for food. <laughs> <laughs> and how did that work out? I went out well. Oh yeah. Like I remember after finding my accounts, I used five hundred to find my account. Yeah. And uh, the following day he added money for me to go and pay for the DSTV mm -hmm. as not choice. Yeah. No, I you I, I I funded the accounts. I grew the account. Um, I think I took out like twenty dollars from the account. Okay. I went to buy food, <laughs> <laughs> and the yeah. other two hundred that that was that was left yeah. from the five hundred. I used it to buy food and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Then I went to to pay to pay the, the D, for the DSTV. When I got in the lift, I blew that account again. <laughs> It was very sad, guys. Yeah. I won't lie. <laughs> yeah. It was very sad. Okay. But it, it, it made me a very strong man, man. Mm. It made me a very strong man. And with blowing so many accounts made me to be very strong mentally. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's something that can come towards my way and and just give up on something that I've I've been mm. trying this whole this whole time. Yeah. yeah. Because even if I may lose everything that I have, mm. I know that I can wake up tomorrow morning and trade again and regain everything. Okay. Because of the moments that I had throughout, mm. throughout um, trying out trading, work, working on myself. Because like one thing I learned is trading will grow you as a person mm -hmm. and will grow you mentally. Mm. Um, whether to stop being impulsive, whether in taking any position. Like even this week, I, I posted on Instagram that I'm not proud of myself that I placed a trade before I fully analyzed the trade. I only mm. saw the pattern of the market, mm -hmm. then I decided to enter onto the market. Yeah. Apparently, I made like twelve thousand dollars from that trade, and I wrote, "I'm not proud of myself that I that I made this amount of money." Uh, no, I'm not proud of myself that I I, I analyzed after the 
the, the execution of trades. Okay. But I'm proud of myself that I made, I made some money. money. <laughs> 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 yeah. and, that, and, that, and that's actually a very important thing that you actually mentioned right there, mm. the being not proud of yourself for not following your own rules. Mm. You know, mm. and a lot of people are so stuck in that thing of like, the, people just tend to just neglect their rules. And yeah, feel like, yeah. you know what, at some point, I don't need to analyze the market. Mm. I don't mm. need to follow my rules anymore. I'm okay, like yeah. as long as I know the market, so yeah, I know what yeah. not. Mm. Yeah. And, and the problem with that is it builds up and it becomes your main character towards trading. Okay. If you are impulsive in taking trades, you'll forever be impulsive in tra taking trades and you'll continuously make losses. Mm. losses. Mm. And making losses will become your second nature. Mm. Sure. Because you're growing into it and you're normalizing it to yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. The more you normalize it, the more you'll make losses. Sure. So you have, to, you, you have to be used to patterns that will make you profit so that you'll be a, prof a profitable trader. And what, what I'm understanding from what you're saying, when you say you have to, used to, yeah, you have to be used to patterns, it's not just patterns on the charts. <clears throat> Personal patterns. Yeah. Personal patterns. That's why I said trading will grow you as a person. Mm. Because it like reveals um, habits. It reveals habits. As I said, um, it's either you take trades impulsively without analyzing and stuff, mm. then if you get used to it, you get used mm. to it. <laughs> <laughs> you 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 forever <clears throat> like there's people who have traded for four years and they're not profitable. Okay, it's because of the patterns that they are used to. Mm. If they get to um, no, maybe new patterns of like per, like per, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about patterns of the chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, excuse me. I'm talking about per, personal patterns. Mm -hmm. If they get used to personal patterns, they'll grow. Yeah, that's so true. Like better personal patterns applied towards the chart, applied towards execution, um, applied according to um, what they know. Yeah. Mm. So how does one actually get to a point of developing? Uh, the right sets of habits, you know, what, what goes into that? Because <laughs> uh, everyone, people here have bad habits. Yeah. The charts. Um, <clears throat> be willing to learn. Okay. Uh, a sign of being willing to learn is a sign of humility. Mm. Uh, if you're humble, you're willing to learn. Ne? So if you, 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 you're willing to learn every, every six months, every, every um, maybe half a year or something, you'll relearn everything you, you know okay. for you to grow. Mm. So relearn everything and try and grow. Like, into into Ebagwen, Evo, what we could say when personally, yeah. then you'll grow. Yeah. You'll grow. Yeah, no, perfect. That's beautiful. You'll grow. <coughs> yeah, so. <coughs> After the 150k, what happens in life now? That after that first withdrawal, what happens in life now? <laughs> um, I remember uh, it was at night. I think it was around um, 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock, mm. because it came from XM, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, some years ago. Yeah, some years, years ago. back, yeah. Um, I didn't sleep that night. Yeah. Uh, I went. I went in the morning. I woke up. Uh, okay, I went out. I went out the house about around about eight. Mm. I walked to Sun Coast. Um, shops were closed at that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I had to wait a bit, and I got something to eat around nine. Mm. After nine, I went for shopping. Yeah. <laughs> I got myself new clothes. I asked my brother, does he need anything yes. and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the following day, I was trading on the same day. Okay. Yeah? The following day, I made, I requested another withdrawal of 40K. Mm. And life continued like that. Yeah. Yeah. Life continued like that. And I started growing, like finding small amounts, making them big. Mm -hmm. um, I also had a point where I, I had a big ego. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I started 
moving backward, uh, uh, like towards the charts, as I was saying, mm -hmm. like um, you shouldn't have a big ego towards the charts, not not towards my friends and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought uh, I was I was getting uh, I was getting more money than like anyone yeah. now and stuff. And then I traded this other day. I think I blew like eight thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Eight thousand three hundred. Yeah. I blew that eight thousand three hundred, and hey man, it it was very bad. Yeah, it was very bad. Then I started again funding small amounts. I had to grow the money and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, some t and, and and time went on. Yeah. yeah, like a year went on, and I got to the same stage again. Okay. So you now it's just a cycle. Wasn't yeah. It's just a cycle. Okay. Yeah. Then I decided, uh, let me just break this thing mm, mm. because now I'm expecting I'm about I'm expecting a daughter. Okay. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> I wasn't that close with my with my girlfriend at mm. that time. Mm. Uh, was one of those guys, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of those guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, she knows, like. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, I, um, the day I decided to change is when I was expecting a daughter. Mm. I said, let me just focus and work on myself, work on my trading habits, and let me just trade, trade, trade one way. I traded, I pushed myself. Truth is, clients started coming in back again. Mm -hmm. Then I decided, let me not focus on clients. I just um, asked my, my older brother to to deal with that department for me. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you noticed, maybe like if, if you call me, you get to my PA before it comes through to me and stuff. Yeah. So then that's how it happened, man. Mm -hmm. That's motivation. how it happened. Yeah, yeah. That's all the motivation. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. When, when, you, when, when your hands are not too busy with clients and stuff, mm. you get a chance to really trade, like sit down and mm. focus on the charts and build your accounts and all of that. Yeah, mm. yeah that's great. Um, so currently right now, what is like your daily trading routine? Like what is it that you do on a daily basis, especially uh, when you come into interacting with uh, the market? Well, um, I'm a long-term trader now, again. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I used to day trade, mm -hmm. and I, I saw that it doesn't work much for me, nah, mm. because I, I, I prefer holding for long, because I don't want to focus too much, too much, like, on the charts. Okay. So I can maybe, like, place a trade from Monday to, like, Thursday or even the following week. Mm. So what I normally do, I wake up in the morning, check my trades. If I already placed, yeah. I check my trades. I check upcoming trades. You know, on Trading View, you can like set where you want to enter in the market. Mm. Uh, I, I put my alert sets and stuff. Then it notifies me on the email once it reaches. Then okay. I check my emails if anything has reached the, the targets of entry. And I check whether the market's forming any candles that are showing my, my direction or any patterns that are showing my direction and stuff. Yeah, every morning I do that. Um, then maybe like sit with my daughter throughout the day and check my trades. Yeah. That's the only thing I do. <laughs> 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 yeah. And maybe I go out for a drive with my daughter. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah. Yeah, it's 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 nice. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, nice. it's it's not like I'm too I'm I'm very busy. I avoid being very busy. Okay. That's why I I, I I ask my brother to deal with everything when it comes to clients and stuff because mm. when whenever we have classes I teach mm. and maybe now we have classes like once a month. Mm. We have classes like once a month. I avoid meeting up with clients like mm -hmm. every now and then because it distracts it distracts me from my trading. Because sometimes if you're not watching the market, at some point the market might turn. It might turn maybe for a reversal or something. Like before before I became a a, a long term trader, I used to be a day trader. The market will hit will go down, maybe like go bearish, then come back up and I'll be frustrated and stuff because I was too busy mm. focusing on other things and stuff. Mm. 
Mm. But when I decided to be a long-term trader, I left my trades. I left my trades up until it reaches. It's either close to the target or on the target. Yeah. <clears throat> Whenever it goes on to good profit, I just put my, my, my break even, then I let yeah. it slide. Okay, so what I want to understand when you're talking long-term trades, uh, uh, how long are we talking about the, on average? On, on average, maybe like, okay, minimum. Minimum is like three days yeah. to, let's say, like eight, nine days. I don't hold for a month. You're not there yet. Is this where you find like your, is, is this your spot, your sweet spot? Right? Yeah, it's, it's my sweet spot because <clears throat> um, one of the things I noticed after, after being a long-term trader, uh, I'm not. I'm not trying to brag or anything. I'm uh, like it's just. Uh, I'm yeah. just. Sh I'm just sharing. After being a long-term trader, I was able to buy like three cars. Okay. In a space of five months. Sure. Then yeah. being a day trader, I, I open, I close. I open, I close. I open, I close. <laughs> 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 yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. And one of those cars was my dream car. Oh, no, like I if. See. No, 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 the, the M2. Oh, the M2, yeah. yeah the I saw it downstairs. <laughs> yeah, um, because the, the A3, it broke down, mm. and I got myself a Polo. Yeah. <laughs> then after the Polo, I got a C200, mm. which was around November, November, December last mm. year. Then I got the M2 this last month. Mm. Um, during the process of these three cars, my life has been like changed. Okay. Change, change, change. Mm. I feel like I can achieve <coughs> anything now. If I wanted a mansion, I would. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really like possible. that's how my mind is set now. Okay. Yeah? Because like long term trading helped me a lot. Oh, yeah. It helped me a lot. Because closing trades early, like you end up closing small money mm. yeah? and you think it's enough, but you still have gold. Mm and targets you want to reach. Yeah. So the psychology behind that, actually switching from day trading uh, to swing trading, which is mm. what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what goes into that? Because obviously, essentially, you have built up, like, let's say, habits uh, mm -hmm. towards day trading now. Mm -hmm. Like, what was the biggest, like, obstacle that you had to get <laughs> over, actually? Let me ask you, like, what was the biggest obstacle you actually had to get over? to go from day trading to swing trading? You know that fear of if you don't close this profit, it might, you might lose it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I used to go through that a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. Even my girlfriend once said, once said, I close it, baby, close <laughs> it. Because <laughs> the money is there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I close it, close yeah. it. And I decided, no, I won't close. Mm. I won't close. I told myself, like, quite a few times. Okay. And I told myself over, like, seven times. Okay. I told myself, I'm not closing. Mm. I'm not closing. Mm. I'd rather p put, like, break even. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because at some point, it would come back to, and hit break even. And I said, ah, I wish I closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think that's one of the hardest things is being comfortable mm. with a break even. Because you, you know what essentially happens? I think that's a, a lot of people, they'll, they'll do exactly what you're doing. Open a trade, goes into profit, mm. move their stop loss to break, break even. even yeah. And then hits break even yeah. and <laughs> kick themselves. And then they think the next trade they're going to open, uh, they leave it at the stop loss, break, and yeah. they won't even bring it to and break it, even. And, and, so it will come back to stop, stop loss. loss. Exactly, yeah. it won't even break mm. even. And you mm. find that some people find themselves in that exact habit of like, yo, I'm okay, I'm okay with losing this. Now, whereas you don't really have to lose it. Mm. Yeah, so mm. how did you become comfortable with the break, with, with it coming to break yeah. even? Well, with me, man, if, okay, the, the, there's this one point when it came back to stop loss, okay. yeah, it hit stop loss. And I, I told myself, well, it's, I, it's fine, let me just relax and not trade. Let me just relax and not trade. Mm. I relax, recover emotionally. Every time I make a huge loss, yeah. I wait okay. and recover. Even if I see something, yeah. even if I see something on the market, I wait, I recover emotionally, then I go back to the okay. market. So that's one thing that helps me a lot. Mm. It helps me a lot. 
So then I decided to go back, trade with small lot sizes mm -hmm. to regain my confidence again. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Then I started trading with bigger lot sizes after regaining my confidence. Mm so that's, that's, that's one thing that helped me a lot is like confidence um, building that con confidence building phase. Every, every time, man, every time I make a huge loss, mm. every time I take a huge knock, I go back to small lot size. Yeah. Not to recover the loss that I made, okay. but to rebuild myself mm. because I'm working on me. I'm not working on the charts. <laughs> yeah, well put. Well yeah, put. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not working on the charts. I'm working on me. That will produce the results from the charts. Yeah. So I have to focus on me to build myself and then work on the chart. Yeah, no, mm. that's perfect. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so I do know you, you uh, under uh, Kairos, uh, your brand, mm -hmm. there's a robot, there's a software, mm. there's... Okay, so now w the discussion I basically want to mm. uh, push right now is basically the difference between automated trading software trading mm. and uh, manual trading. Okay. Like, uh, just, uh, it's because I'm, I'm pretty sure there are people at home <laughs> who are just like robots. Everyone here is robot, robots, and then everyone here is software, software. And, I, and I've actually come across people who actually think that a software is a robot and a robot is a software. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, let's start with the robots. Okay. Robots is fully automated. My, 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 my eldest brother did IT. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, he is the one that's trading as well. Okay. So um, the robot is a fully automated one. Like it executes, closes trades for you, it does everything for you. Mm. Yeah. Then the the software it analyzes the market for you. It tells you where to buy and mm. where to, where to close. So is it based on a specific uh, strategy or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then it also shows you what to focus on okay. when the, when like it gives you confirmations of the trade that you're about to take. Okay. Sometimes it will give you a buy. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't confirm, maybe like on the below below confirmation box, mm. don't take that trade. Yeah. So that's a software. Okay. It analyzes the market for you. It gives you like three con three confirmations and gives you the direction of the market. Mm. Then that's what you use to trade the market. Okay. Then when it comes to manual trading, you know, yeah. Um, <laughs> analyze yourself. yeah, you analyze yourself and you execute according to your your analysis. Yeah. No, so pretty much that's the difference between um, all of those things. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, okay, right now, uh, and, I, and I, I, this is probably one of my favorite topics, I, and mm. I, I love to ask everyone because everyone's mm. got a different... Money management for me is uh, one of my biggest passions about, especially within the industry, because I always feel like money management is probably the, what makes or breaks us as traders. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so what money management tips would you give people? Because money is coming in right now, <laughs> but I um, Okay, yeah. money management according to the charts or money management according uh, to hmm. money coming in money to your, coming in, your, yeah, your, 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 your Making bank. money from forex yeah. and being able to grow with that. Okay. Like what, what tips would you give people that, hey, look, try this? What you can't manage, you'll lose. Okay. What you can't manage, you'll lose. Reason why I say that, um, at first the problem is making money. Okay. And when you start making money, the problem is managing that money. Yeah. And if you're not able to manage that money, you might lose a lot of it. Mm. Yeah. So if, if you manage money right, Either you put it into something, but I always prefer that whatever you're doing on the side, like manage it yourself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't yeah. give it to anyone. Okay. Yeah, don't give it to anyone. And this is outside of trading. This is outside of trading. Okay. This is outside of trading. Manage anything you do, whether you buy property and you're letting it out and stuff, try doing it yourself first. Okay. Try doing it yourself, 
whether it's you most people want to buy trucks yeah <laughs> that's true. That yeah true. manage it yourself get the driver yourself mm -hmm. um travel yourself to bumalanga whatever mm -hmm. it is do it yourself because a lot of money is lost in between the process of being managed sure. you lose a lot of money in, in in the process of that but when it comes to money management use your money wisely mm. use your money wisely Put it into proper things. Put it into something that will grow your business. Put it into something that will grow whatever you're doing. Mm. Yeah. Um, and also, focus on your family more. Mm. When I started getting a lot, a lot of money, I focused more on my family. Okay. I focused more on my, well, my girlfriend, my parents, um, my brothers. Uh, to be very honest with you, to be very honest with you, one of the closest people I have right now is Dr. Martin as a friend. Mm. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of people um, I had as friends. Nah, and I saw that they like taking a lot away from me. Mm. It's not a matter of, oh, see, I'm cutting them off. No, I'm not. But the thing is, you have to also calculate the people you spend a lot of time around. Because you might be spending a lot with them. Like, imagine every day you're spending like 10,000. Mm. Imagine like every day 5,000, every day like 2,000. So you're losing the management of money there. Mm. So it's important to be around people who you're able to understand each other with. Yeah. yeah. And whenever you go out, whenever you do things, whenever you want to do business together, you have to be able to say, okay, Martin, okay, right now you, you're wrong. <laughs> for us to save money, yeah, this is so what true. we have to do. So yeah. true. You have to be able to be with someone who you can confront. Mm. Yeah. So, and another thing, when it comes to money management, is the, like the people we choose to be around, our girlfriends, our whatever it is. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend doesn't like designer brands. I took her to LV yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I took her to LV yesterday. I said, I'm buying this sneaker for you. Yeah. It was like 20, 26, 27,000. She said, no, mm. I don't want it. Mm. So I'd rather get me something else. I'll yeah. go to Mr. Price or something. <laughs> and I said, ah. That's why every time I come home yeah. like w with something for her, I buy it myself, then I go home with it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't go to the shop with it anymore. <laughs> because she even tells me, ah, baby, this is too expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But mm. I enjoy nice clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a guilty pleasure. No, when we were at Gucci, I baby, this is expensive. I, baby, I. And she always says, I, you always leave me whenever you go and do shopping. Yeah. That's the reason why. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good, it's good to have a person like that around you. Okay. Yeah, because it protects you from using a lot of money mm. in unnecessary. Trip is, trip is not necessary. Honestly speaking, oh, yeah. it's not necessary. Yeah. <laughs> I do drip at points, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. it's not necessary. It's not okay. a must. Okay. It's not a must. Yeah. You still have your Nike brands. Mm. You still have your, your Adidas brands yeah. and stuff. That's still fine. Mm. That's still fine. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Alright, no, uh, I'm so far I'm enjoying the chat so far. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, what has been your worst trading day uh, in the markets? On uh, trading, like what has been like before the, before NFP the week the week of NFP. Yeah, like you, <laughs> can, can you can, <laughs> look, Martin's even the laughing like I know. <laughs> What happened? Uh, we we want to know like what happened. Ah uh, man, I sh the market just goes in its own way. Yeah. Maybe it's with me. I'm not sure. Maybe okay, it's so with like me. it was like every single month you feel, or was there a specific uh, incident that happened that had you feeling okay, like no, this one's my worst trading day. Maybe I trade once now. Okay. Like maybe I trade once on the week of NFP. Mm. It's either I trade on NFP day. Okay. Or. Maybe on a Wednesday or a Tuesday. Yeah. But I don't trade on Monday. Yeah. And I don't trade on Thursday. Okay. But I trade on maybe on Friday. Yeah. yeah. No, but what I'm getting to is like, what's the worst trade? Like your, your worst trade you had? Um, I think 
excuse me, I posted it once on <laughs> on Facebook. Yeah. Right? I wanted to go to another estate in Durban and, and, and get myself a house. Okay. I had an account, a, a USD account, sitting on $230,000. Mm. Sure. I made a loss of 180. I'm, I, I, on, on, okay, before I made the loss, I made like $80,000. Okay. Because I wanted to double the amount of the money I had okay. <laughs> in my yeah. trading account. Yeah. To be able to like buy the house comfortably mm. and get furniture and stuff. That, this is before I moved to Mklanga. Okay. Um, then I made a loss. Sure. Nah? I stopped trading for a month yeah. after that loss. Then mm -hmm. I decided, let me just move to Mklanga to a flat. Mm -hmm. um, in my like one bedroom flat yeah. and I decided to rent there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the <laughs> worst loss. I think it was around 20, 20, 2020 if not. Yeah, 2020. Mm. But yeah. what, what's the lesson you took from that whole... Uh, Don't over risk. Don't over risk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you just neglected your risk at all. Don't over risk because sometimes you might win. Mm. Nah, but you're putting yourself into a bad pattern. Yeah. It's better to, to it's better to make profits like gradually. Mm. Small profits become big profits at the end of the day. Because I take a two thousand two thousand Rand accounts maybe to like uh thirty thousand in one day, I'd be very happy. And I fund ten thousand the following day. I knock the whole 10,000 down because of the habit that I'm putting mm. myself into. I find another 10,000 from the same profit. I <laughs> knock the whole 10,000 down. Yeah. <laughs> I find the 10,000, I make profits of 20,000. Yeah. And I find another 10,000, hoping that I'll make 100,000 and knock the 10,000 down. I knock the 10,000 down again. I knock the 10,000 <laughs> down again. Yeah. <laughs> so it's better, man, to like, Trade from 2,000, your, your 2,000 to that 1,000 is still fine. Mm. That 1.5 is still fine. Mm. That 4,000 is still fine. Mm. Nah, mm. On a good day, maybe, yeah. you know. Then grow your account gradually. Mm. Then to like knock the whole account off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what a lot of people do. Yeah, that's well, true. yeah, if they make it, hooray, I'm happy for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, I'm happy, but at the same point, a person is putting themselves in into a bad pattern. Yeah, true. Into a bad pattern. Some people might think they they, they actually winning. Some mm -hmm. of them are winning. Mm -hmm. now, it depends. Some of them are winning, but some it won't work for everyone. Mm. It won't work for... You can't, like, put a 55-year-old or a 60-year-old into that pattern. Mm. You can't. Mm. You have to put them in a pattern of like, slowly growing your, your money, slowly growing your money mm. up until you get where you want to get. Sure. Uh, that's, that's beautiful. Uh, another thing is, what has been your best trading day? <laughs> <laughs> um, or your best trade. Rather, let me not say best trading day. Let me rather use the term best trade. What has been your best GDP trade? USD. Oh, yeah. Circumstances around that. Any day yeah. I trade GDP USD. Even if you wake me up in the morning, yeah. I'd analyze GDP USD. And because GDP USD will give you patterns every single day. Okay. And that pattern will be the direction of the day. Mm. That's why I used to be a day trader. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, if you're watching 15 minutes on um, a 15 minutes chart mm -hmm. on GPUSD, you can go through it when, whenever you get yeah. time. You'll notice every single day it will give you a pattern. Okay. And with that pattern, it will move according to that pattern. Mm. At a specific time? Or like throughout the day. Throughout the day, okay. Yeah. yeah. But before nine, yeah. find the direction. Or uh, maybe sometimes it does happen in the morning, like mm. around three, two ish. It depends. Yeah, yeah. It depends on where the market is and stuff. Yeah. But just find the fi find the pattern, and you'll see it'll move throughout the day with that pattern. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Yeah, so we've come close to the end of the interview. Uh, 
I know you, you have a business, plug your business over there. <laughs> plug your business, tell them what you do. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, guys, um, I'm a full-time trader. Mm -hmm. um, I also like teach how to trade. Mm -hmm. um, I educate people yeah, on how to trade. I also start a software which analyzes the market mm -hmm. for an individual and also a software, mm -hmm. a robot, I mean. Mm -hmm that um, trades for a person mm -hmm. um, it depends how much you want to put on the robot yeah. even if you have 2000 rand okay. can even grow that 2000 rand into something okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. so, so that's what i do so, so where can people find you um well for now i have um, instagram which is pedalani underscore mgadi mm -hmm. Um, and also Facebook, Pelan Pendulum Guard. Yeah. Just make sure you get the right account. Yeah, the right things, guys. It's fine. Because there's lots of fake accounts. There's a lot of fake accounts. Yeah. Yeah, so before uh, we conclude, uh, any advice for traders out there? Um, I'd give advice to new traders, okay. not to old traders because they, they're used to what they're doing now. Yeah. New traders should get into the habit of not rushing the money, um, but rushing the skill. Mm. Um, not rushing um, that I made 20,000 or 10,000, but rushing to get the right analysis mm. and also sticking to their analysis. That's the advice I'd give. <laughs> thank you very much. Right, shout. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, that I enjoyed that. That was fun. Uh, yeah, and I'm um, I'm hoping you guys also enjoyed that as well. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here with Upelani <laughs> Mgadi. Yes, <laughs> I said it right. Yeah, I yeah, Mgadi, Mgadi. Yeah, right. just saying, come on, logo, but not saying good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, thank you very much for Thank you so uh, much, bro. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it. <laughs> right, guys, thank you so much for watching Smooth Little Money from Top Chain of South Africa. And I'll see you guys in the next installment of Market Masters. That was too clean. That was too clean. <laughs>